everyone. My name is Ahmed Shayan, and I'm currently a student at IIT Bombay. I took the SAT in 2024, August, and I scored 15, 13 in the SATs. So today I'll be telling a little bit about uh, my journey through the SATs, why you should take the SAT, and how do we go about it. So firstly, what is the SAT? So the SATs are essentially a test that are often accepted widely by American colleges, many colleges within India, as well as colleges across the world, including the UK, Singapore, etc. So the SAT is uh, it's primarily used by uh, colleges, uh, and it is conducted by the college board. And we can use these, of course, to get admission into colleges as undergraduate students. So. What exactly is the SAT and how do we take this test? So the SAT is a test that we can register for. It is conducted in an online mode and there are two subjects, that is English and Math. The test has the scoring between 400 marks to 1600 marks and any score above 1400 is considered a very good score. So how long do we need to prepare for this test? Uh, that totally depends from person to person. I personally had to spend a total of two weeks to prepare for the SAT since I had also simultaneously been preparing for JEE. So I did not really need to prepare much for math or English for that matter. But depending on the person, they may need more or less time. Uh, however, the structure of the SAT is in fact, it includes four sections two sections for English and two sections for math. So essentially, English has uh, the first section that we get a total of uh, around 40 minutes to answer all the questions. There are about 25 questions. And then we have the second section, which also has 25 questions and about 40 minutes. The thing, however, is that the second question can get progressively harder depending on how well we have performed in the first section. And this is the advantage of the digital paper. The sections, they are, get adapted to your, to your scores and to your uh, level of uh, difficulty. And accordingly, you will get a test paper. Now, the first thing is that preparing for the SATs uh, is a bit of a confusing thing since we don't have a lot of sources. We have very rarely heard about the SATs. For example, everybody talks about JEE, NEET, etc. But very few people talk about the SATs. That's because it is a little more obscure, at least in India. And main prospects of uh, the SATs are in colleges abroad, as well as some colleges in India. Uh, but predominantly, it's for admission into colleges in the United States, the United Kingdom, Singapore, and other prestigious colleges. Personally, I used my ACT score to get admission into five colleges in the UK, namely the, the University of Manchester, the University of Sheffield, the University of uh, Southampton, the University of Leeds, uh, and the University of Edinburgh. Similarly, I used my SAT score for admission into the National, into the National Technological University of Singapore. However, uh, these scores can be used for admissions in many other colleges, including but not limited to Harvard, Stanford, MIT, etc. Now, the first thing to know about the preparation of SATs is that the test paper is relatively simple for most Indian people. The level of the mathematics that is asked is around 10th grade maths. But there are certain questions that are around 11th and 12th grade level. Um, apart from that, English is mostly limited to general English that we use every day. But there are some tricky questions that may come from vocabulary, grammar, etc. So in order for these questions to be prepared, a good coaching is essential. Or you may want to uh, take note from online resources such as the SAT's official website itself, which, which offers many materials for you to prepare for the same. Now, the SAT is a digital test, meaning you will have to take it on a computer, a laptop, or an iPad that you will have to bring on your own. So the SAT, it's uh, essentially like your one-stop uh, destination for all foreign colleges, since they do not, uh, since foreign colleges actually, apart from your uh, school scores, they will definitely ask you for your SAT scores. Now, about the sections that are present in the SAT paper. So, in total, we have four sections. Two for English, that is reading and writing, and two for math. Uh, so, English includes uh, questions from vocabulary, comprehension, 
and a couple of uh, phrases and general idioms in etc in english now the comprehension part is a very important part since it encompasses the majority of english one must be able to understand how to infer information from a large paragraph uh, earlier back when we had the written sats we used to have only a few comprehensions only a few paragraphs and we were supposed to answer several questions based on a single comprehension however now ever since the advent of the digital sat we have one comprehension per question so one must really in, uh, increase their reading speeds since we have uh, several uh, 50 to 100 words comprehensions and we have only 30 minutes or so for answering 25 questions so essentially one must be able to read in uh, read very quickly one should be able to read an entire comprehension paragraph within one minute and also be able to quickly understand the question answer it accordingly further we have the second section of english which is identical to the first section however its difficulty depends on your performance in the first section essentially you will take your first section and then you will get a break the computer is going to calculate your score already but it will not display to your uh, your score however it will be able to figure out whether to give you a difficult paper an easy paper or a medium paper or a medium paper based on your performance in the first section so that means that the difficult second section is always a good sign it means that you have performed well in the first section moving on to maths we have questions from a number of topics including but not limited to algebra simple everyday math trigonometry and a little bit about the cartesian system and cartesian planes that is lines equations etc however none of these are very difficult most of them are simply 10th grade level or at the very most 11th and 12th grade down to basic level uh, so essentially in order for you to be able to solve these questions you must keep uh, track of the time we also have the uh, we also have the advantage of having a calculator available in the acts we can we are not doing our own calculators as well as we have provided a graphing calculator on the on screen calculator that is provided during the test so there is no problem of calculations one must be able to quickly understand the question and make sure not to fall for tricky questions so the primary way to score in math is to read the question properly because the sats they love to trick us with questions that are actually really easy but they have a little difficult language so it is it is kind of uh, troublesome for us to understand what is being asked so one must make sure to not overlook a question or not underlook it one must also not overthink the question because these questions that we are often asked in sats they are relatively simple so there is no need to waste time on a question that is otherwise simple now there is also a very important use of trigonometry while there are very complicated uh, trigonometric equations out there uh, in acts we only require very basic uh, trigonometric equations such as the understanding of what sin theta is what cos theta is tan theta etc so it is nothing too complicated it is very much reachable for most people who are preparing to study for even neat or je these are very common balls for the students these are very uh, tricky and very tough papers as well as there's a lot of competition so the acts offer a far easier as well as a far less competitive scenario for the students to take that uh, course distinction can take the acts there is a whole road open for you uh, after your acts are completed so essentially it is the gateway to all foreign colleges as well as many colleges within india so in fact all the ivy league colleges such as harvard stanford uh, and other colleges such as the university of pennsylvania columbia etc mit that is the massachusetts institute of technology they all look for students with excellent sat scores along with extra curricular activities typically sat scores in all ivy league colleges range above 1500 and for that you will have to prepare well however don't worry if you have even a lesser sat score since there are colleges for all sat scores in fact uh, if you look at the average sat scores they are about 1000 so if you are above that you are most definitely sure to get a good college in the united states or in the united kingdom singapore etc in fact many colleges within the uk singapore as well as the united states often offer you incredible student grants and tuition discounts scholarships etc for having good sat scores 
Uh, so the first thing that happens once your OCT results are out are to look for colleges that accept students within your SAT scores. The colleges with the highest SAT scores averages, such as John Hopkins, MIT, etc., require you to have an exceptionally high score, while some colleges uh, will require you to have lower SAT scores, such as 1400, 1300, or even lesser in some cases. So essentially, if you have a good SAT score, you are sure to get into a good college that is often lesser, less competitive and often easier to get than most colleges within India that we get through the conventional competitive exams, such as JEE and NEET. So it's essentially one of the easiest ways for you to get into a good college without having to go through the struggle of incredible competition that we often have in India for many engineering as well as medical degrees. Further, SATs will not limit your uh, will not limit your uh, scope. Essentially, you can use SAT scores to get into an engineering college, to get into a medical degree, to get into any other uh, field that you wish to, depending on the streams that you have chosen in your eleventh and twelfth grade. And oftentimes, some colleges will not require you to um, have uh, certain streams in order to pursue a particular course. So essentially, SATs offer a lot more flexibility than the conventional exams, such as JEE and CUET as well. Since you have essentially the full right to choose whatever course you want in whichever college you want based on your SAT scores.